Iranian Tomcats fired many AIM-54s at Iraqi planes during the eight-year Iran-Iraq war that began on September 22, 1980. But it's possible the first Iranian Phoenix kill actually took place before full-scale fighting broke out. In the fall of 1980, as tensions escalated, Iranian jets flew limited strikes on Iraqi forces just across the border opposite Iran. F-14s flew top cover. According to aviation historian Tom Cooper, on September 9, 1980, Iranian Tomcat pilot Mohammad Reza Adeyi and a wingman were protecting a formation of F-4S bombing Iraqi positions near the border. My backseater was 1st Lieutenant Sultan Pasha Poor, Adeyi told Cooper. 13 feet long and weighing 1,000 pounds, the rocket-propelled, radar-guided AIM-54 flew at Mach 5 as high as 80,000 feet, while carrying a devastating, 135-pound warhead over a range of more than 100 miles. Former Navy F-14 pilot Francesco Chiarisi called the Phoenix a lethal sledgehammer of a missile. But in more than 30 years of U.S. service ending with the type's retirement from Navy service in the mid-2000s, American Tomcats fired just three AIM-54s in anger. All in 1999, while targeting Iraqi aircraft violating a UN no-fly zone. Back then, I was a major and the second Tomcat was piloted by Major Sharm Rastami, the ground radar announced to us one target that was approaching the border and closing fast, and asked us if it is possible for us to engage it. At the time the government had given us strict orders to never stray over the border or engage in cross-border combats in order to give Saddam Hussein no excuse for an invasion. We were to engage only if they violated our airspace. Then we had the right to engage and destroy them. I told the radar I will head toward TFB.4 Tactical Fighter Base 4, near Desfil to land and refuel. After refuel ENG, we took off from Desfil, and I was immediately alerted that there was an aircraft roughly 50 or so miles away, in a northern direction. I saw that this target was coming from direction of Hamadan, meaning from north to south. I asked the radar are you sure it is a foe and not a friend. They said standby so they could check the status of the target, but after a short delay the radar said, no, this is definitely an enemy. For us it was hard to imagine an Iraqi pilot would be as brazen as to enter our airspace. Until then, the Iraqis never had the guts to do so. I told my backseat radar intercept officer Pasha Poor to launch a missile at this target. After a quick pause I repeated my order. He told me to do it. I told him to do it. Finally, he pushed the button. The Iranian Air Force officially credited Adi with a kill of an Iraqi Sukhoi Su-20M flown by pilot named Faisal Abdul Fattah Abdul Rahman, Cooper explained. But Iraq never actually operated any Su-20 MIGs. In 1980 it did however operate Su-20s, not M models, that Iraq bought from the Soviet Union in 1973. According to one Iraqi government study that Cooper cited, the first Iraqi loss in the conflict with Iran was in Su-22 flown by No. 44 Squadron Commander Major Nauber Abdelhamid al-Hamadani, shot down on September 14, 1980. While the Iranian F-14 crew certainly had good reason to claim its first kill on September 9, 1980, currently it remains unknown if Adi and Pasha Poor really scored the first ever kill by an AIM-54, Cooper wrote. It's possible that this honor belongs to 1st Lieutenant Faridun Ali Mazandarani and 1st Lieutenant Qasim Sultani, who claimed to have shot down a MiG-23 with an AIM-54 on September 17, 1980.
because I flew F5s earlier, I was used to seeing the missile going off the wingtip rails and accelerate really fast. I never fired an AIM-54 before and did not know what a Phoenix launch actually felt like. Once Pasha Poor pushed the button, I could see nothing. I only heard the sound of something detaching from the belly of my aircraft. I told Pasha Poor that I think that, unfortunately, the missile malfunctioned and fell to the earth. Thus I inverted my aircraft to see what was going on below and saw the missile falling away. But then I saw it releasing a smoke trail, only then did I recall that the launch sequence took several seconds. I rolled out and got back to checking the radar and saw the countdown until the missile would hit. This was counting down, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 then 0. And then I saw the target disappear from my radar. The ground radar called to congratulate, that poor guy nearly fainted in excitement. 